We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. So I want to come on here and talk about the whole T. Wayne, Little Wayne situation, okay? So if you guys remember back in the day, honey, when auto-tune was really, really popular back in like 2006, 7, 8, Lil Wayne and T. Wayne were supposed to collaborate together and they were supposed to come out with an album called T. Wayne. And it never happened, okay? So now fast forward eight damn years later, T-Pain takes to Twitter and he basically announces to the world that he's tired of these files being on his computer from 2009 and he needs room on his hard drive and so he's just gonna release the music out for free. And when I tell you social media went nuts today, okay? So the new T-Wayne album is out on SoundCloud. I listened to most of the songs. They sound pretty good. They take me back to 2009, you know what I'm saying? And I think it's pretty cool that he decided to release the music. I don't know how Lil Wayne feels about that. He hasn't said anything thus far. But I want to go ahead and show you guys the comments, the tweets, and what folks were saying about the new T-Wayne album. Check this out, and I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. <laughs> Alright, so you guys just saw the comments, the tweets, and what folks had to say. And for the most part, the reception has been really good. A lot of people seem to like the album, and they're really happy that T-Pain leaked it. So now in other news, honey, we have two old school celebrities, honey, going back and forth on social media. And basically, Peter Thomas and Uncle Luke are currently beefing about who owns Miami. Yes, y'all. Crickets. Who owns Miami? Damn it, I thought Will Smith owned Miami. After all, he had that awesome song, and what was it called? Uh, Miami? <laughs> I'm wrong, okay? It all started when Uncle Ben's, aka Peter Thomas, decided to make a video on Instagram basically talking about how he's the one who had the first club um, in Miami. He bought all these superstars down there, all these celebrities. And he was basically saying that folks should know about him because he was the one who put Miami on the map for the most part. And basically, he also mentioned Uncle Luke's name in the video. We all know that Uncle Luke is the unofficial mayor of Miami, okay? He's been putting in work for years, and Luke is a really cool guy. Very, very down to earth. Very brilliant man. Um, basically, he had a response to Peter Thomas, and it wasn't one response, honey. He literally had about four or five responses. And then Peter Thomas eventually replied back to him. So I want y'all to go ahead and check this back and forth between Peter Thomas and Uncle Luke. Check this out, and I'm gonna come back with the rest of my commentary. Good morning, good afternoon, party people out here on Instagram and Twitter world. <laughs> It's your boy Peter Thomas. I was in Miami the other day and people were talking about, hey, welcome to my city. Let me be clear. There would be no blackness celebrating on South Beach without Peter Thomas. How can there be down established that? Without a doubt. I took Puff, I took Russell, I took Dre, I took all of them down there for the first time. Never been to Miami Beach. And I gotta tell you something else. First black club on Miami Beach, was Fifth Street, DJ Waggy T, baby. He used to come up Fifth and Lennox and turn back. Luke came after me. I was there first. Okay, so don't be acting like if Miami ain't my town. It is my town, and I could come back and take that anytime. Ask DJ Khaled. <laughs> I 
I see you, Irie. One love. Part two of this history lesson for my man, Peter Thomas. Peter, let me explain to you. You don't run Miami. Nobody runs Miami. Miami is made up of Trick Daddy. Miami is made up of Ball Greasy. Miami is made up of Trina. Miami is made up of Rick Ross. Miami is made up of Pitbull. Miami is made up of Flo Rida. These are the guys who run Miami. Only thing I did was pave the way, my brother, so you and nobody else could try to erase my history. I'm the one who brought hip-hop to South Florida when I was bringing down Jekyll and Hyde, T. Rock, when I was bringing down Divine Sound, when I was bringing around Mantronics, shit like that. Bro, you weren't nowhere around here when I was owning clubs in High Lear, Strawberries, the Pack Jam, Pack Jam Team Disco, Pack Jam Skate Ring, DJing in the park. Bro, you weren't nowhere around here. That was in 1976 when all this was going on. So you did not manufacture hip-hop in South Florida. You just came in. I want to thank you, Tony Neal, for sharing this reality TV guy, Peter Thomas, video with me where he uh, invoked my name, where he said basically he started hip-hop in Miami, had the first club on South Beach. In fact, Peter had the first reggae club on South Beach. Then he went on to say he runs Miami and he brought hip hop to Miami. All that is untrue, fake news. Unfortunately, Peter, my brother, this shit was going on long before you even got here. When you were in New York in diapers, I was bringing down Run DMC, T La Rock, Mantronics, all that kind of stuff like that down here. So this is a this is the mere fact that what you guys do, you come settle. I call you a settler. You come settle in South Florida and think you run shit here. In fact, you don't. You settle, and then you can't run shit, and then you leave. That's so, Mr. Thomas, you called DJ Khaled, as if DJ Khaled runs some shit down here. DJ Khaled is, is another settler. He came from New Orleans. He went to Orlando, couldn't get on as a DJ in Orlando. Then he came down here to Miami, got on at Mix 96, the underground radio station. I heard him on the radio, and then I brought him to light, to the mainstream on 99 Jams, on my mix show, along with Papa Keith, along with Soul Syndicate, along with DJ Irie, along with Uncle Al, all these guys. My brother, this guy don't run shit down here neither. He just screamed Miami out. He need to be screaming out New Orleans. So when you want to scream out a, a DJ Khaled, really? You need to be screaming out Uncle Al. You need to be screaming out Boda Lover. You need to be screaming out Soul Survivor DJs, things like that. But that's something you don't know nothing about, bruh. Because you're a settler and you settle on Miami Beach. And you think you know Miami, you are not. This is from my brother, Mr. Campbell. And I said Mr. Campbell because I have nothing but respect for you. Okay? I said I opened the first black club on South Beach. You might call it a reggae club, but I open up with Howard Hewitt. We had a reggae night on, on our Sunday, which was legendary with DJ Waggerty. Okay, and I went on to open several other clubs: Onyx, uh, Static, Savannah, Barcode, several other clubs on South Beach, my brother. Okay, and you know for a fact that the How Can I Be Done established blackness on Miami Beach in a major way. You know that. I'm not taking anything away from you. You're the king of what you do, without a doubt. Okay, but I don't know about me beating my diapers when you were doing it, though. You know what I'm saying? But you definitely was. You're a legendary, brother. I can't even say nothing about that. You know what I'm saying? Nothing but love. Okay, but when you had Pac Jam, when you had strawberries, I had Club Manhattan. Remember Club Manhattan? That's what I'm talking about, baby. Let's go. All right, so you guys just saw their back and forth. And like I said, this whole situation is not only funny, but re damn ridiculous. I don't understand why these two men who are almost 60 are going back and forth about who owns Miami and who brought who down to Miami and who started what in Miami. You know, so I just found that really funny. And I also found it funny when Uncle Luke was basically knocking DJ Khaled. I was like, well, damn, what happened between him and DJ Khaled? You know, he feels like he's not really Miami either. He just screams it out. And, you know, Luke has always had an issue with folks coming in from other cities and trying to act like they're the ones running Miami or they're the ones putting Miami on the map. 
I remember a few years back, he was going in on Lil Wayne and Birdman because they were acting like they were the new kings of South Beach and Uncle Luke wasn't having that. Like I said, the whole situation is funny watching them go back and forth, but we all know Peter Thomas, you know, is pretty mature. Uncle Luke is pretty mature. I don't see any of this blowing up outside of social media. I don't see them drawing guns at each other or in Peter's case, a damn box cutter. I don't see that happening. I think they both have a lot of mutual respect for each other, but I think Uncle Luke, you know, he's very territorial. He don't want nobody coming in and trying to claim nothing that has to do with Miami. Uncle Luke is Miami. When you think about Miami, you think about Uncle Luke. I have never equated Peter with being a part of the Miami culture. When I think about Peter, I think about that damn peach, okay? I know how to work it and be seen. <laughs> so anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning Peter Thomas and Uncle Luke going back and forth on Instagram. And then what do you think about T-Pain leaking T-Wayne? The T-Pain and Lil Wayne album. Have you guys checked it out? Did you guys listen to it? What do you guys think about it? So let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. All right, deuces. Hey you guys, it's your girl T. Make sure to subscribe, like, and share my videos. You can also visit lovelytea.com to purchase any merchandise. Also, don't forget to click the boxes down below to watch any of my previous videos. Talk to y'all later. Deuces.